Hi folks, welcome back. I finally succeeded in building a, uh, a simple oscillating inverter circuit and I wanted to show it to you. <coughs> and uh, this is the, the, the basic circuit right here. It's just a coil, uh, a, mag uh, a magnet uh, sw a reed switch, a battery, and a LED uh, bulb, and a uh, little neodymium magnet. And that's all the components to it, so there's very little what you would traditionally call electronics in it. There's no transistors or resistors or anything, although you can add them to this circuit and modify it. But uh, just for a really basic, s simple circuit, uh, this works right here. And I'm going to show you that. So what I've started with here is a, uh, this is a coil and core out of a uh, microwave oven uh, fan, cooling fan. And so I took uh, I took it apart and just left the, the the coil right here, and it has three pickups on it. Uh, this blue one right here is a uh, oh what do you call the midpoint <coughs> uh, pickup center tap, and the orange and the white one here are are both ends of the of the coil. And so all I've done is take a, an LED. And I got the, the one end of the coil to the one end of the LED, and the other end of the coil to the other end of the LED. And then I have hot glued them onto this, uh, to the frame of this right here, just to keep them stable. And then I took a reed switch and I hooked it onto the negative uh, end of the cable, and I glued it onto either side of the coil right here, and left a little prong out here that I can hook the, uh, the negative battery up to. And so that's that's basically it. Uh, this is a, just a wire coil that I added on there. I haven't done anything with that. I'm not using it right now. So it's basically just this coil and an LED across the coil uh, for that. And then uh, you take the reed switch and you hook it up to uh, the battery here, and that neck makes another little service. So you have a basically you have a small loop here with the coil and. Uh, and the LED, and then you add uh, a battery and the reed switch in series around that, and to make another loop. So you have a loop within a loop, and then the, the magnet goes right there to, to run the whole thing. All right. So now let's hook it up. And what I have here is just a one 1.5 volt battery that I've got these alligator clips made, so I can hook it up easy. And so we're going to first of all I'm going to put the uh, battery across the LED so you can see it's not going to light it because it doesn't have enough voltage. This, this LED requires 2.4 volts to light it. So anyway I'll touch it right there and you see there's no light coming off of it. Alright so now let's take the, uh, make sure I got it hooked up right here. That's the positive hooked up there. And the negative hooked up on this side here. Okay, and so we're just hooked up just like that. And then I have a little magnet here. Now, watch what happens when you put the magnet down here in the vicinity where it goes. And it's got to be faced the right way. There it is. See, if you turn it this direction, it's out of polarity and it doesn't do anything. Flip it over and get it in the right space and it, and it clicks on. Okay, and it's got to be right and right. And, it's, and the active spot is right here in the middle of the magnetic switch too. If you go this way, it doesn't work. If you move it along the magnetic switch, there's the spot. And you can, I can feel it vibrating in that magnet when I do that. And then you take it, and there's another, there's hot spots along right there. But, so you got to be in one of those hot spots. So, but if I set it down right there in that hot spot, there we go. And so now we can measure our volts and stuff here and see what we got. Now our, let's see, that's the negative. See the meter there. 
at 1.42 jumping around a little bit but 1.425 or so uh, volts on in the battery okay and now let's, let's go over here and if we measure the LED it shows 0.73 volts DC. Now you know that that ain't right because that that LED ain't going to write, ain't going to light on point, uh, 0.73 volts. So, but if you switch over here to AC and then you measure it, you see that we got, whoops, 1.9 uh, volts. Okay. Between 1.8 and 1.9 volts. So, uh, and actually, when I tested this earlier, it was at uh, 2.3 volts. So maybe it's got it's a bad connection, or maybe I'm just moving this around a little bit, or maybe it would uh, just try it. Yeah. it. Feels looks like I got a bad connection somewhere though. Backwards. Point seven, and you know that that's not right. So now let's see what. Let's go back to our AC volts again. Yeah, there it is, one point eight. So apparently, it just produces the amount of voltage it needs to drive whatever load it is. I suspect that if I put a a, a, a load on there that needs a higher voltage, they would probably produce a higher voltage. But here's uh, something else interesting about this, uh, about the magnetic switch. On this, if you turn this thing like this, you hardly, get, you know, I did get something back here a little bit. But see, it, it doesn't want to react as much. But as soon as you flip it this direction, then it does. Yeah. I got the right side anyway. I got the right side there. Might have something to do with this uh, setting on this uh, core here, right there too. Anyway, what I suspect would would be the way this thing would work nice is if you took a if you took a magnetic uh, reed switch like this one here. I've got a little tiny neodymium right here with a hole in the middle of it, and the and the the reed switch goes right through the center of it. So it seems to me like what works at George uh, Chana Takafis or whatever his name is, uh, his, he has his reed switch inside the coil and that's where I'd like to put it too. You can imagine this being inside inside the coil with the magnet uh, right at the ac action point on it right there. So that's what I'm going to work on trying to build next because I think this is going to would work good and it can also give some protection to uh, the reed switch and get it on the put it on the inside of something so uh, and then I could roll a coil like this one here I just rolled this on paper see and I could I could slip that down down inside of that all right so there it is there's an oscillating and, and uh, this is oscillating. It's it's not uh, really fast oscillations. It's in the uh, kilo um, kilohertz range, and not megahertz. Uh, so uh, it's, it's 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 less than 10 kilohertz, I think, uh, on these right here. At least the ones I've seen so far. And you could probably, I'm sure you could make them faster than that. I but uh, probably modify the number of turns on the coil. Seems the less turns. The, the faster they seem to be, so maybe put, uh, start to the circuit small with a small number of turns and make it high speed. Uh, it might work uh, might work a lot better. So anyway, there it is. There's my first oscillating inverter circuit, and you can pull AC or DC off of these things, and uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. It's really simple, and I can make it a lot smaller than this. But I like uh, using this right here because I can play around with the coils on it. 
So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Alright, I'm back with one more thing to show you before I uh, run out of time. And uh, the following uh, screenshots are uh, weather pressure uh, maps of the United States uh, for the last eight months, uh, spread out one month apart. And uh, I want you to notice that the west coast of the U.S. has developed a permanent low pressure area basically that's been sitting there now for three years that I know of that I've been tracking it and the, the, the lows are getting lower and lower uh, on this big cell right here and uh, so I, it looks like it's a regional thing because uh, you know Fred tells me that his pressure in the east seems to be pretty normal fluctuating but uh, I know from out here you know, on the west coast that uh, and we're definitely setting in low pressure almost all the time and the low pressures are getting lower I, I, I've showed you my barometric gauge and I know the gauge is okay so anyway I just wanted to show you this series of uh, things that going back for the last eight months and uh, notice how uh, that the uh, the cell has gotten uh, really really large here in the last uh, four or five six months all right Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.